Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. I decided to take some of the lessons that I've uh, given you and uh, put them into use and make an actual project. It's, uh, it's just going to be a bushing or a bearing. It'll be similar to this. This, of course, is an oil light bearing, which means it's sintered bronze, which is, uh, of course, you know, pre-lubricated. But we're going to make one out of uh, uh, just brass stock. Uh, this is inch and one thirty second, so that's what the OD will be simply because I have it in stock. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, one comment. Uh, thank you for the comments that you make on my videos, and I've had many favorable ones, but uh, I get so many requests for certain videos, you know, I, I just can't honor all of them. And I also uh, get a lot of questions, and I'm sorry I can't answer all the questions. There's too many of them, and some are very involved. And if I were to uh, put that much time in on it, then I've got no time left for anything else. So I just can't answer all of them. Thank you, though. Okay, back to this. I've made up a little sketch. And this is a lathe project. Let's see if this shows up. This is just a real quick sketch that I made. But we're going to, uh, as you see here, have a 132nd OD. This is a side view. I didn't make an end view because of course it's going to be round. The overall length is one inch. The flange on it is uh, eighth of an inch and then uh, the balance there is seven eighths. And then the uh, OD here that would be pressed into your work is uh, 750,000 so we'd like to hold it real close to that. And then the bore, we're going to ream at 500 thousandths, and we don't want that, I didn't put the tolerance down there, but we don't want it to be any larger than that, and uh, certainly not any smaller, so we're going to try to get it right on using a reamer. Uh, watch the different uh, steps that I, I take in order to do this, and uh, some of these ought to be done in the sequence that I show you, although you can vary from that a little bit. Now, do not start by cutting your stock to length. I always like to start with a, uh, a larger piece that I can hang into the, uh, or I can put into the three-jaw chuck, and then the very last thing that I will do is, is cut it off to length. So some of the operations that we'll perform on this project are going to be uh, turning and turning to a shoulder, facing, center drilling, drilling, reaming, and uh, cutting off chamfering you can see we got some nice chamfers on there which is the bevel that makes it look finished if you don't do that and you got sharp edges uh, it just looks like uh, it's an amateur's job so try to work on those little details because that's what machining is all about is, uh, is making it uh, accurate this may take two videos I'm not sure I don't like the videos to run much over 10 minutes because even though YouTube claims that you can put the 15 minute ones on, sometimes I have a failure when I attempt to load the real long one. So that's why uh, I choose the length that I do. And I am using high definition. I'm on the closing 12 inch lathe and I've got the stock in a three jaw chuck and I have about uh, three quarters of an inch hanging out. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is face it off a little bit. Now somebody used this brass rod as a drift and they pounded on it, but so I faced it smooth. I'll take another couple passes on that, but uh, it's oversized right here. It's mushroomed out, but that doesn't matter because that's going to be turned down. And then uh, after facing it, the next thing I'm going to do is to drill it and ream it. So I'll do the, uh, the hole forming operations uh, next. You don't necessarily have to do them right away. I'm going to do those while I have it choked up short into the three jaw chuck. Now the tool that I have is, uh, I'm holding it in the Aloris holder, but it's a 3 8 uh, square tool bit stock and I did not grind it special for brass. This is a, about 85 degrees so I will be able to get into the uh, corner. I may change tools someplace along the line, but this was working fine for facing. There's a little bit of a radius on it, so if I go into a shoulder, it's going to leave a radius there, which is fine uh, in most cases, and uh, that way you don't have a weak spot if you've got a real sharp corner. Now, the, all the books are going to tell you to use uh, special angles for brass, and, but this is real soft brass, and this uh, tool that I've been using for steel seems to be 
uh, pretty good for that. And of course you can use your regular old rocker type tool post. I just happen to have uh, the Aloris already mounted on the, the lathe. So we'll come in. Now I'm locking the carriage so it doesn't push out on me. Turn the, the uh, lead screw off. Makes a little less noise. We'll feed it in just a little bit. And now I'm cutting. And I'm just feeding this by hand. If you want to use your power feeds, you can, but it's only stock that's a little bit over an inch. So there it is, and I've got it faced off. See if I can get in there for a little better uh, shot of that. There it is. It's been faced off smooth. Not much of a nipple left in the end. Remember we're going to drill this now so I have mounted uh, a center drill in the tailstock chuck, the Jacobs half inch chuck. Notice that I've got it in there choked up pretty short. And I'll back off the tool post a little bit and move the tailstock in and I'm going to center drill it. Now when you first start to center drill engage the tool uh, very slowly into the work so that it doesn't try to find its way off center. Now here's the sequence that I'm going to use to drill. I'm going to start out with a center drill. You should always do that because it uh, it's short and stubby and stiff and it helps you uh, get the hole on center. You don't want to start with a hole that's a little bit uh, off of center because then you're going to ream and end up with a, a bell mouthed hole. Secondly go in with a, a quarter inch I'm just that's arbitrary number but a small bit a nice sharp one and remember that the uh, the bushing is one inch long so I'm going to drill a little bit farther than that so that I don't bottom out I'm going to go in uh, at least an inch and a quarter deep with my quarter inch bit maybe even a little farther than that Then I'm going to drill with a 1560, uh, a 15 30 seconds bit before I ream. Now that's one thirty second under. Some of you are going to say that's not that's allowing too much for reaming, and that may be true. And if it suits you better, go in with a thirty one sixty fourths. The reason I do that, there has been times when. Uh, when this will drill a little bit oversized and then there wasn't quite enough material left to ream. But uh, probably a 1 64th is better but I'm going with 15 30 seconds. Now I've got two reamers here. This is a half inch hand reamer. Some of you may only have a hand reamer so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, but I'm not actually going to ream the hole that way. I'm going to use this chucking reamer which is a half inch just held in the chuck. But I'll show you how to do this too if you've never done it. My RPM is 600. Alright, we are now center drilling. And you're going to go in uh, about two thirds of the way up of the tapered part of the uh, center drill. You don't want to break off a center drill because then you spoil the work or you're going to have to cut the end off and start over. You cannot drill out a broken off center drill. The kids in high school would break them off and I had to buy them by the dozen. Alright, that's done. Now I'll put the quarter inch bit in and I'm going to drill in uh, one and a quarter inch deep. This is a quarter inch bit, and I'm going uh, by the graduations on the quill of the tailstock, as far as my depth is concerned. I started at quarter inch, so I'm going to go in uh, up to the uh, one and a half inch mark. Put a little of a mystic metal mover on there. 
this is drilling real easily. and a quarter deep. Back it out. If you're any deeper than that, back it out several times to clear the chips.